Hello, everybody. Um, today, I wanted to talk about metaphor. All right. And um, I'm bringing this up because um, I've been reading my Penguin Modern Poets 13. And I got into the Philip La Mancia. Or La Mantia or La Mancha. No. We'll say La Mancia. La Mancia. Philip La Mancia. I was really looking forward to reading this guy. I read a poem. And, um, I don't know how to say this. I'm not angry, but I am just so fucking annoyed with how poetry has been. Now, if we want to get crazy here, and um, if you remember the Poetic Anarchy class, um, I talked about this. Let me go like this to keep my eyes focused on you. Um, in the Poetic Anarchy course, I talked about T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland. And how he purposefully made poetry fucked and complicated and difficult for people to fucking understand on purpose to, like, almost as a fucking joke. Like, there might have been other reasons or whatever, but that, at the end of the day, <clears throat> that's what happened, okay? So since then... Um, like we've had back and forth, back and forth, people just being, especially in free verse, being just really fucking literal with everything. And, um, some say that's bad. Some say that's good. Um, I actually prefer it than people being fucking opaque for the purpose of being opaque. But in using things like simile and metaphor um, there is a purpose for this now poetry at its core should be easily accessible and easy to understand if you want to get into like some deep art shit and fucking go well, I'm going to make these words sound beautiful together. Do that. But keep it simple, stupid. Like, do you want people to have a connection with what you're with what you're writing? Like, do you want people to fucking like live a moment in your shoes? And see what there is to fucking see through your eyes? Like, do you want that? If you do want that, <clears throat> then fucking write something that is fucking accessible for people. Okay? Um, and I'm going to get into a little bit more about this in a second. The other thing is, I think similes are easier for people to use than metaphor. Because you could say, <clears throat> I don't know. This coffee cup is as hard as my skull. Whatever. Like, we just did that. But I probably would not say, I drank out of my skull. Okay? That is your metaphor. Okay? Um, now my head is, or my cup, is my skull. But if you don't explain to your reader that this skull I'm drinking out of is really a cup or a mug, no one's going to know what the fuck you're talking about. And I'm not saying you have to do it in a fucking stupid, ridiculous way. You could just say, my skull mug, I took a drink out of it. That's not very poetic, but at least you're getting the point across of what the fuck you're saying. Okay? Okay. The whole idea of, like, metaphor, simile, whatever. Okay? The whole idea of this. And we're going to get to the poem in a minute here. But I'm fucking pissed off right now. The whole idea 
of making a metaphor, okay, is to take something that is abstract and make it very ordinary or taking something very ordinary and making it abstract. Like, I'm not going to say, like, um, oh, what's a good example of this? I'm all pissed off right now. Um, like, I wouldn't, like, take my glasses and go, I took my my face windows and put them on. That, okay, that just fucking kind of sounds stupid. Yes, they're glass. We get it. Like, you see through these windows. And now I could fucking read and not go blind. Um, little things like that. <clears throat> so, it's just... When people do things and go out of their way to be so fucking opaque, like, are they just sitting there, like, jerking off and laughing, thinking about, oh, no one's going to get this. That was probably the most vile thing I've ever done on this channel, and I apologize. So, I'm, I'm, I'm seriously, I'm a little bent right now about this. So, here we go. I'm going to read to you a poem from Philip Lamantia. It's called, I Am Coming. And maybe he's a sick fuck, okay? That, that's the only fucking excuse I could have in my head for why this poem does what this does. It's a short poem, okay? It says, it's called, I Am Coming. I am following her to the wavering moon. Okay, right there, I, I'm like, oh, okay. You're following someone. You put something in the world that everyone can relate to. You are following someone. Everyone has followed someone, whether it was just their mom in a grocery store. You are following someone. We get it. Um, and he's following her to the wavering moon, to a bridge by the long waterfront. Oh, they're, they're going somewhere. Okay. Um, to valleys of beautiful arson. To flowers dead in a mirror of love. To men eating wild minutes from a clock. To hands playing in celestial pockets. And to that dark room beside a castle of youthful voices singing to the moon. When the sun comes up, she will live at a sky covered with sparrows blood and wrapped in robes of lost decay. But I'm coming to the moon. And she will be there in a musical night. In a night of burning laughter. Burning like a road of my brain. Pouring its arm into the lunar lake. Okay. I can say things what I think he's fucking talking about in that poem. Um, but again, it is a fucking stretch for me to say anything. Some would say, oh, but like, it sounds so pretty when you say it. Good. I'm glad things sound pretty when you say it. Um... Orgasmic orangutan. That sounds good when I say it, too. That doesn't mean I should say it. That doesn't mean I should fucking write it down. Orgasmic orangutan. That feels fucking good. It feels good in the mouth, okay? But that doesn't mean I should fucking ever say it again. Ever write it. Ever do anything with it. Anyone can write anything that sounds beautiful. After I read that, I wrote... Blue candle belly blast off the moon with beautiful hammers of eternity and scum fuck balustrades. That was fun. That felt good. That sounds good in my mouth. But there's nothing there. There is absolutely no substance to that. And if someone wants to argue with me 
that there is substance to things like that, then you know what? Let's have this conversation. Because at the end of the day, if we have to argue the substance of a poem, then it obviously means that the poet had failed. If the poet hadn't failed, there would be no need for an argument of substance. So whenever you read an Instapoet or any of these fuckers who just write blah, 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 things like that, like the like the blue candle belly, okay, that that's gonna be our code word for this. Like, if you find anything like this, like, l l l let me come back a little bit. How do you feel when you read something like that? Because more than fiction, poetry is supposed to make you feel. It is supposed to elicit a reaction in you. What does it make you feel? How, how do you feel when, when you read this poetry? Um, when I read that poem to you, how did you feel? And the only reason... and. I don't know. I, I wouldn't say only reason because that poem would have pissed me off um, morning, noon, or night. But this poem, th this is actually a really fucking good point now that I think about it. This poem was the first poem of Lamantia's following the poem, the last poem of Bukowski's in here, called Something for the Touts, the Nuns, the Grocery, grocery Clerks, and You. Um... I'm just going to read a little bit of this to you to, I don't know, let's see what we have here. We have everything and we have nothing. Some men do it in churches, some men doing it by tearing butterflies in half. And some men do it in Palm Springs, laying it into butter blondes with Cadillac souls. Cadillacs and butterflies, nothing and everything. That is how you actually use metaphor. You are showing something as something else. Something to understand. Okay? Something to make sense of things. Whereas the other one, like, my, my brain rode, and I'm going to put my arm in the lunar lake of her butt, I guess. But the point of the matter is... If all you use is abstract terms in your poem, by making everything in that poem abstract, nothing in that poem is abstract anymore. The abstractness of your poem is now ordinary. Do you see what I'm saying? So in order to make something abstract hit... You have to have ordinary things in there, so then this sticks out like a sore thumb, and it fucking hits somebody, and makes them go, fuck, yes, Cadillac souls, shit. You have to do that. If you don't do that, everything's fucking... I use the term metaphor orgy, or metaphor, metaphor orgy, and the reason why I do this is... This, this is good. We're, we're going to talk sex here for a minute. Okay, metaphor orgy. If your poem is just metaphor after metaphor after metaphor after metaphor, 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 um, it, there, there's nothing else going on. So now let's look at the logic behind orgies, since this is now an orgy. When you are being intimate with your partner or someone for the first time and it's whatever it is it's intense it's beautiful there's something there you feel it okay because that thing is extraordinary this thing is abstract because you walk into your room and there's the bookcase there's the bed there's my dresser there's a naked lady. There's a naked lady on my bed. Okay? You, you do the whole thing. 
But when you go to an orgy, you walk into a room and there's so many naked people in the room. So many naked people. So many arms, legs, tits, asses, the whole thing. Guts full of shit, the whole fucking thing. There's so many of these people here. There's, it's hard to like get your mind focused on something. And then when you do have sex with all of those people, what does it mean? What do they say it means when you go have sex at an orgy? It means nothing. It's just sex. So just like your fucking poem, if all there is is metaphor with nothing else in there, your fucking poem, it means nothing. It's just words. You have done absolutely nothing. So, I hope this was informative for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.